The Jeep Gladiator's latest competition is here, the 2024 Toyota Tacoma and the 2024 Ford Ranger Raptor. In today's video, we talk about what it needs to do to stay in the running. Let's kind of jump right into it and talk about what's going on with the Jeep Gladiator. Honestly, over the past few months, I've been seeing a few issues and a lot of people on this channel, as well as on the forums, have been chatting about the fact that more Jeep Gladiators are sitting on the lot and they're not getting sold. I think part of the reason for that, you know, looking at it as a complete economic scale is that obviously the Gladiator is an expensive vehicle for the higher trim models. With the interest rates being as high as they are, it's kind of tricky to do so. And for people that are looking for a truck to use as a truck, the Gladiator is pretty hard to fit all of those boxes. Really when they designed the Jeep Gladiator it was designed in conjunction with the Wrangler and that body style to make sure that could, it could achieve a few things. It could still go off-road on the trail, it had a great performance on the road, and it was able to have a bed to help hold more cargo in the back. I personally owned a 2020 Jeep Gladiator, I absolutely loved it, but it didn't quite fit the needs I needed it to meet and that's ultimately why I decided to get rid of it. The other thing that I was really upset with was on the Gladiator, after I lifted it and put 37s on it, the 3.6 liter with the eight speed automatic just would not hold up. Without a re-gear and the 410 gearing on the factory Rubicon, this vehicle just felt like a dog. I was getting 11 miles per gallon and honestly I wish Wish, wish, wish it had some more power plant options in that vehicle. The three liter turbo diesel was a great option and gave it some more power, but overall for the cost of that, the maintenance of a diesel, as well as the diesel fuel prices here in Pennsylvania and a lot of other states, it was a hard option to pick. Now I think the second problem with that is too, is that the Gladiator has gotten pretty expensive. I've seen a few crossing the upper 60s, even 70s mark, and that is a lot for a pickup truck compared to what else is on the market. For a buyer that is looking to use it as a truck, they're looking at F-150s, Ram 1500s, heck, even 2500 series pickups for the same price and still able to haul and do what they need out of a truck. And some such as the Power Wagon or other lifted models like the Raptor are able to achieve still that off-road prowess that the Gladiator had. But those are some of the things why I think it's sitting on the lot a little bit more and why this competition might be a good thing for the Gladiator. So let's talk about a little bit more on the Ranger as well as that Tacoma, see what some of those new options look like and then throw it back to what I think the Gladiator needs to do to stay in the market. Now let's talk about some of the competition. I'm gonna preface this with the fact that I am not a Ford or a Tacoma guy. I have never, well, no, I've never owned, even owned a Ford besides like an F100 back in the day. Um, but we're gonna talk about some of what I've seen online. So if there's some, a little bit of the errors and some of the details that I have, if you guys are Toyota guys and Ford guys, drop comments below, but just be known that I'm not a Ford or a Tacoma guy. I'm just seeing what I can check out online and going over what I've seen. So let's talk about it first, the 2024 Toyota Tacoma, which I think is honestly a very good looking vehicle. The Tacoma has a very, very good lineage and a good reputation. I know personally from my dad, he was deployed overseas and he said all that we would see over there were the Isuzus and Toyota Tacomas that were flying around in the desert with hundreds of thousands of miles. They were extremely reputable and they just ran forever. That name has lasted for a very long time. The Tacoma is one of the forefront of that. You can buy one of these things, beat the living snot out of it, and they completely hold up. The 2024 redesign, I gotta be honest with you, looks sharp in my opinion. I think it looks very, very neat in the TRD edition. And then even on the back of the seats, I'm not sure if it's true, but they look like an Iron Man suit and they kind of reference it in that uh, in, the lo in the logo on the Toyota website, but it has like pressure valves and releases and gauges on the back of the seat to help you really stay planted when you're off-roading. One of the things that I've really liked about the Tacoma is that over the years, it's held that lineage of working holding up, having high quality when it comes to resale value, and then also just kind of the sturdiness that surrounds that brand name. The one thing I'm not as happy with with the 2024 redesign is the 2.4 liter four cylinder hybrid powertrain that now comes standard. Now, I don't know it's standard on all models, but from what it looks to be, it's offering above a little bit over 300 horsepower with, they say this with the hybrid platforms, over 450 pound-feet of torque. That's a little bit debatable too, because you've got so much more of a battery weight to help get that foot-pound of torque. And I gotta say that it gets eaten up pretty quickly. But the 2024 Tacoma, the interior has also been completely redesigned. So that's something that a lot of Tacoma buyers they would also reference the fact if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's why the Tacoma interior was so outdated. Well, 
they finally updated it with a very large horizontal style screen, much like with the redesign on the 2024 Wrangler. They've given it some more tech on the inside, obviously some upgraded seating options. The whole exterior has been refreshed as well as the power plant under the hood. So that's driving some pretty good competition. And I don't know if it's the highest model, the TRD Pro or whatever, the top tier off-road model. Comes the Fox 2.5 remote reservoir shocks or coilovers on that setup. And then what else it has is 33 inch tires and it looks like it's a Goodyear Authority RT, which is a different setup than I've ever seen. But overall, pretty stable competition. The Gladiator Max is out at a 33 inch tire as well. And I gotta be honest, the Tacoma is a good option being that you have so many different varieties and you can still set it up in a crew cab as well as that standard cab which has the mini half door so very cool on the Tacoma and if you guys have some more info on that drop that down in the comments the next one that's competition that just came out in the states here now this vehicle had been overseas for a few years now is the 2024 Ford Ranger Raptor that's a cool setup as well guys I've seen those overseas and a lot of folks here were waiting for it to hit the US market before they jumped into the Ford game the Ranger is neat but I gotta be honest I'm not the biggest fan of that vehicle even with the tremor package and some of the things that were released the very I don't know it had a very weird shape to it the bed sat so high the bedsides were like three foot tall at some points and the fact that it still came with a mechanical front cooling fan that you could hear like a small school bus I just wasn't the biggest fan of that with the Ranger Raptor, the interior has been redesigned to house that Ford very tall vertical screen that they've had in a few vehicles such as the Mach-E, the Lightning. It's something like that on the interior. And then the coolest thing is that it's a 3.0 liter V6 turbocharged engine that from what the website said is pushing over 400 horsepower and I think like 430 pound feet of torque. That's some serious power out of a three liter V6 and I'm sure it might be even twin turboed underneath there. Cool thing is though, it's also not a hybrid drivetrain. So that is just a complete gas Gasoline engine that it does have some uh, some turb skis added to it to give it a little bit more power but overall very very cool another thing with that Ford Ranger though that I really liked was the fact that it's kind of like the baby Raptor people will call this like the mini Raptor it still is able to go out in there and perform much like a full size but at a much more comparable price point and also with a size that is easier for most mid to small size truck owners to easily get easily to easily get into and be able to perform in there much like kind of the gladiator size so that's pretty neat to see and some of the interior also was updated as well i'm personally a fan of that mini ford ranger raptor but the problem i see is that when people start ordering them they're going to mark them up 15 to 20k so that's my only nerve-wracking thing is that for folks getting into it find a good dealer and also make sure that you get some writing and some things in writing when you order that vehicle because i think when both of these come out they might be a little bit over just because they're a brand new vehicle and they're completely redesigned so here's what I think the Gladiator needs to do to stay ahead of the competition, if not completely leave it in the dust. I think there's a few things that Jeep needs to do to redesign this vehicle to really make it the next step in the Gladiator platform and compete with these vehicles that are brand new and refreshed. First and foremost, the interior refresh that the normal Wrangler is getting. So the 12.3 inch screen, the new seats, the safety in the roll cage with those side curtain airbags and overall those new seat designs and a couple things on the interior that the new Wrangler is receiving. The wireless CarPlay, Uconnect 5, the biggest thing is the infotainment to stay up to date with those other models that were just refreshed. The grill, I'm not sure, but some people seem to hate it, but I think that would be kind of also following that refresh as well with a mid-cycle. So maybe upgrade the grill on the front end of the Gladiator, just to give it a freshened up look. Those are some minor ones, but the interior is pretty major when it comes to the consumer, but upgrading that is top on my list. They've got to do the same refresh in the Gladiator to stay relevant with it. The next thing, which I'm not sure why they've never done, even on the back when I used to be ordering vehicles, you could see that there was a vehicle code or a sales code that would allow the 35 inch tire package. Why the Gladiator doesn't set up an extreme recon package is unbeknownst to me. That seems like the perfect platform to throw a factory inch and a half lift, 35 inch BF Goodrich KO2 tires and the extreme recon wheels. It's the same bolt pattern for the wheels. They can fit 35s just about on a Rubicon stock. Add an inch and a half lift, throw the 35s on, and completely leave the competition in the dust with the biggest tire size and the highest lift available right from the factory. Included solid front and rear axles, and maybe even give it that full floating axle that we're seeing in the 392 and the Rubicon that's coming out. Give it the full floating in the rear as well as the Extreme Recon. Put the 456s in there because a lot of people are doing it already, and I would probably have been more comparable when I was looking at a Wrangler or a Gladiator to order if it had those as an option. Now the last thing that the Gladiator really needs to do, I would say to step above the competition and just completely leave it in the dust, no matter even how high the costs go, is to put the 392 or a Hemi in the front end in the engine bay of the Gladiator. 
every comment I see on here is telling me that the Gladiator needs a Hemi, I'd buy it if I had it. From the sales figures of the Wrangler Rubicon 392, I would dare to say that Gladiator owners would love that. My personal opinion is make it an option on the Rubicon or the Mojave and give it some sort of hybrid with the 392. And I say hybrid, not hybrid engine, a hybrid concept between the Mojave and the Rubicon. Put the 392, slap some 35s on there and let it be an absolute beast off-road. I don't know why they're not doing it. I'm not sure if it's safety regulations, if it's fuel economy. Obviously that 392 fits in the frame rails up front unless they're changed on the front end of the Gladiator. I'm sure there has to be some sort of reason, but we've been wanting it. A lot of the Gladiator consumers want it as well. And I think if they want to stay up to date, if they did some of those things through a 392 or even a 5.7 out of a truck in there, that would really, really, really set it apart. So that's what I'm hoping to see. I know it's kind of a far-fetched idea, but if they did it, I think the Gladiators would sell through the roof. I think there would be no limit to how many they could get especially with that power plan under the hood. So this video has kind of been chatting here a little bit about the Gladiator and what it needs to do to stay up to date. A lot of you guys have been chatting about the Wrangler. I personally own one, but I think the Gladiator audience is just as big. And when you guys ask us questions, we try to answer them. This was coming from a few of the viewers that kind of were talking about what the Gladiator needs to do to stay relevant. So we listened to some of those comments and decided to make a full length video on it. But what I want to hear in this comment section is what you think the Gladiator needs to do. And hopefully Jeep corporate and Jeep executives are watching this they can read through all the comments like we do and really get some feedback back from the customers that are purchasing these vehicles but until next time my name is matt with dirt road cred thank you so much for stopping by until next time get out there and earn yours